What's happening guys? So looks like late 2019, the government released a new government website, or at least they made it a lot better than it was before called the College Scorecard. And this is uh, collegescorecard.ed.gov. So basically what this site does is it gives you some very important information on individual colleges, right? Because if you've been watching this channel at all, you'll know that, you know, some universities give much better educations and they give you a much better price than others. And it actually breaks it down by field of study. So it doesn't just say as a whole, this is how much students are making afterwards. Say this is how much our engineering students are making. This is how much our, you know, liberal arts psychology students are making. Um, this is how much our film students are making. This is how much our business students are making, that sort of thing. It also goes over how much debt students are graduating with, how much it's costing per year year uh, per student, um, what kind of uh, pay students are getting uh, with certain jobs after they graduate with a degree. And this is a super amazing resource and it's one that I haven't mentioned before on any of my other videos. I will be using this a lot in the future to do research. I think it is definitely something you should look into as well. This could be a game changer in terms of people making smarter decisions on if they should, you know, spend four years of their life and go 80,000, uh, spend $80,000 and go 30,000 in debt. Uh, to get a degree or whether they should maybe go to a certain university, this will definitely help you with those sorts of decisions and it could be a real game changer. Now this is gonna be a super quick video. I'm not gonna spend too much time on this uh, because I think I'll be using it in the future, but I am gonna go over a few examples just to illustrate my point, okay? So this is the uh, college scorecard for the University of Phoenix and I'll kind of show you how to find it. It doesn't have the best um, functionality for search to be honest with you, but I just typed University of Phoenix in, and of course they have like 700 different ones because they have one for each state. And then I clicked on University of Washington, and it gives you some preliminary information down here, which is pretty good. Um, you know, definitely some pretty good stuff to look into. But let's go back to it because it gives you a lot more data when you go to the actual page. Now, the average annual cost is around $13,875. That's pretty high, especially considering this is an online university. You know, their overhead should not be that high. And, you know, it's because they make a lot of money from people, in my opinion. I could be wrong about that, but that's my opinion on the matter. Um, I think a lot of you know what my opinion on most online universities is. So you can kind of go down here. Uh, it breaks it down by, you know, cost, talks about, you know, average annual cost from family income. Doesn't always give you a ton of data because, you know, they might not always have a lot of data to work with, but it is definitely um, very useful. You look down here, uh, <laughs> this is very good information to have. Graduation rate is 38%. That's extremely low. Now I want you to keep that number in mind as we look at some of the other schools, okay? So this costs, you know, 13,875, there's 38, percent graduation. Now one thing that I will note here is this only goes over uh, four-year colleges. I don't believe they're going over graduate programs yet. Um, with this that would be great if they did. I have not been able to find that yet. If you guys can find that let me know. You know it breaks down saying uh, you know 61 percent of students uh, withdrew from the program probably because they weren't very happy with the education they were getting. Uh, you go down here, it'll tell you how much uh, typical lo monthly loan payments students are paying. That's really amazing information to have. I mean, uh, I, that's just, that's extremely useful because it'll give you a very good idea of what you would be paying after you graduated from the university. Now, one thing that's really cool is it breaks down salaries by fields of study and it gives just a, a kind of an average range of all salaries here, right? But then it also breaks it down by different fields. So, you know, the business administration and operation people, uh, they're going about $38,000 in, into debt and their, you know, their median earnings are about 46,200 a year. The human uh, services general bachelor degree, 44,000 in debt, 31,000 uh, median earnings. Now, this isn't how much it costs, right? This is how much they go into debt. They might be getting grants. You know, a lot of them might be, you know, military, for instance, they're getting it all paid for. So this is the median, you're just averaging out everybody seeing how much they're going into debt. So a lot of people are probably quite a bit higher than that. Median total debt, 42,000, uh, 44,000, 42, nine, you know, 
these are these are generally not very good numbers, right? Behavioral science, they're only making 29,800. That oof. And they're going 41,000 in debt. That's rough. Uh 47,000 and then 39,000 is all they're making. Public administration bachelor's degree, 52,000 and then median total debt is 43,000. Um, you know, just just giving you some food for thought here. Um, it's really cool how it breaks it down by all the majors that they offer. Now let's go over to, you know, just because I'm doing this in Washington, I live in Washington. So let's, let's go over this. Um, this next one is going to be the University of Washington in Seattle, right? So the other one was almost 14,000. University of Washington, very well respected university, costs about 12,000. Okay, still pretty dang expensive. I would always recommend doing the first two years at community college and then transferring your credits so you only have to do that for two years. That's my that's my recommendation, but you know, it is what it is. Now pay close attention to this number here. 84% average graduation rate. 84%. The other one was what? I think we what, what was it? 30% or something? Yeah, 38% graduation rate versus 84% graduation rate. I mean, that's just like night and day. There's there's a huge difference there. These are the sorts of things that you really want to be doing research on before you decide to go thousands and thousands of dollars in debt, spend like fifty to eighty thousand dollars on an education. These are the things you need to be seriously researching, making sure that you're going to a school where you're going to get a good ROI. Now let's look at some of the cost breakdown here. Okay, so they have more information. Um, they kind of break it down a little bit more by family income. So if you're, you know, if you're from a very poor family, it looks like they offer a lot of scholarships. This is great information, man. You see, you see how this works? Like you are, you are at, the, at your fingertips, you have access to this information. This would tell a lot of people that, um, there's a good chance that they offer a lot of grants and scholarships to poor families. They help poor families out. Whereas, you know, people who are making a little bit more, they probably don't get as many grants and scholarships, right? So if you come from a poor family, it might be a good idea to go to a university like this who offers that kind of help and resources to you. Uh, students who return after their first year, this is another metric they do, 94%. So, you know, the main two reasons that people don't finish college are A, they drop out because they don't think it's worth it, right? You saw that a lot with the University of Phoenix. And then B, the second reason is because it's really hard. They drop out because it's really difficult. Um, so that's something you can kind of think about when you're looking at these statistics. And then the, the third one that I forgot about is 9% transferred. So transferring isn't necessarily a bad thing because you still get to keep those credits. Like maybe they went to University of Washington for the first two years and then they decided to transfer somewhere else for whatever reason. Maybe they have a better program there or whatnot. But guess what? They still get to keep a lot of those credits. So that's not necessarily the worst thing in the world. Let's move down to financial aid and debt. It looks like they're paying a lot less in financial aid than the other school. Isn't that crazy? Huh? 106 to $297 a month. The other one was in the $500 range. What does that tell you? Now we have the salary after completing the field of study. You see there's a much bigger range here. It goes all the way up to about $114,000 a year um, in that range, but it does break it down by field of study. Now it kind of gives the most common uh, fields of study here, and you can look into this, like, you know, psychology, very common. People are making about 32,800 median after they graduate, and they're graduating with about 16,000 in debt. Now that is a lot lower than what the other school was graduating with. Why do you think that is? They were almost around the same price in terms of the total price, but the other school had a lot more in terms of the total amount of debt they were graduating with. To me, the reason for that is probably because the University of Washington offers a lot more options for getting your schooling paid for, and they probably offer better counseling and more guidance that will, you know, lead you in the right direction. You know, again, I could be wrong about that, but common sense tells me that's probably why people are graduating with much less debt. You know, we look at the communications, they're only making about 37,000, but they're graduating only with $15,000 in debt. That's not too bad. Biochemistry, making 31,000, graduating uh, with 14,500 in debt. Economics, only about 18,000 in debt. They're making about 44,000. Political science, 16,000 in debt, making about 35,000. 
Um, let's see, finance, 60,000, only about 14,000 in debt. Mathematics, 44,000, 15,000 in debt. Computer science, of course, they're making real good money, 68,000, only about 15,000 in debt. Uh, public health, eh, not too bad, I guess, 36 and then 16. And then uh, general, I don't even know what the heck that means, bachelor's degree, area studies, I don't know what that even means, but you can even go further. Um, and it'll break it down a lot more than that, right? You can go look up the really niche ones. Okay, so let's see engineering. And there's like aerospace engineering, bachelor's, master's, doctoral. I, from what I've seen, it doesn't give too much information on the master's and the doctoral degree. But okay, bachelor's, you're getting about, you know, 15,000 in debt, 60,000. That, that's not a bad investment right there, guys. That's really not too bad. Now you'll notice, you know, uh, some, a lot of these will not have, um, information for certain ones like, uh, let's see, biomedical engineering. It won't have information just because there's just simply not enough people who are graduating in that field to have a lot of information on that. So if it doesn't have any information, you know, that's just the way it is. Civil engineering, 61, 16,000, you know, these are all really good ones, but what I'm going to do here is we're going to go ahead and compare a degree from the University of Phoenix to a degree from University of Washington, right? So I'm going to go ahead and find one that was offered at the University of Phoenix that is also offered at Washington, right? So, okay, so I'm choosing a totally random one here, uh, accounting and related services. This is a very common one. Obviously, you've got accountants, you know, um, Everybody knows what that entails. It's kind of a business related degree. Uh, they're going about 42,000 in debt and they're making about 41,000 at the University of Phoenix. Now go over to the University of Washington. They're making over $10,000 more and they're way less in debt. They're less than half the amount of debt. So what is going on here, guys? This is why this is such an amazing resource that you should be using. Another one I kind of wanted to just drop in here right at the very end. Um, I'm looking up uh, Columbia University, City of New York. This is known for being one of, you know, very expensive private uh, university. Um, and, you know, again, this is just undergrad, right? This is just the debt that you get in when you go in undergrad. So this is not the debt that we're talking about. Um, if you go to grad school, it's just undergrad, okay? So, you know, 24,000, that's almost like double what the other two were, and that's just undergrad. We're not talking about grad school or anything like that. And then let's look at what they're graduating with in terms of debt. Again, we'll go ahead and find like a business-related degree. I guess we'll look for accounting if they have it. Okay, so it looks like they don't have, they don't actually have the accounting major. Um, okay, so okay, so I'm I'm having trouble finding anything from them. So I guess I'll just stick with their uh, most popular fields of study here. Um, let's see, political science. All right, they're graduating with about twenty five thousand in debt, and they're making about fifty one thousand. So this is a little bit more than what um, University of Washington was graduating with. Usually they were around like you know twelve thousand in debt or something like that. Not too bad, and uh, median earnings were were probably about the same. So just something to think about. You know, going to a private university, maybe if it's at the top, you know, for whatever degree you're considering, that might be a good idea, but generally it's going to be a lot more expensive. Again, this is just a really great tool for you guys to use. So definitely check it out. Overall, just uh, go ahead and check out my videos here. Made them just for you. Uh, smash the like button, hit the subscribe button, ring the little notification bell, and comment down below.